What's up everyone, Kinetic Coach Dan here, and today we're gonna take a deep dive on the resistance in rotation cub, that's the complete upper body bar. Now, the cub is completely and totally unique in its design. We've seen bars that have fixed alternative hand positions, that's stuff like cambered bars or the Kabuki Cadillac bar, what have you. We've also seen bars that do have the ability to rotate but what we've never seen that's completely unique to the Cub is the ability to add resistance on that rotation. Now, you might say, well, you can use dumbbells and just rotate your hands while you're using the dumbbells. And I would agree with you. Yes, you can rotate your hands while you're using a dumbbell. But what you don't get from rotating a dumbbell, you do get from using the resistance in rotation Cub. So let's take a deep dive on it and check out what's actually going on when you utilize the cub. So yes, while there are qualities about dumbbells that you get that you don't get from even using the cub, for instance, having your arm unilaterally loaded, you do get the ability to rotate in a similar way. Now, if I don't add the resistance band to these pivoting pegs here that allow us to create that resistance, then I do have a free gliding bar that does have some general level of resistance to the actual movement here, especially when weight is applied to the bar and a significant amount of weight. This bar can handle up to about 315 pounds loaded up and moving with some decent velocity. I've seen some really strong guys lift with this bar. I'm not that strong, but I can get some weight on there and move it and it moves just as smooth as ever. I would even say smoother once there's more weight on the bar. But the moment you add that resistance band to the pegs here, this is what totally changes the quality of benching with the cub versus benching with a dumbbell and adding rotation. When you have a dumbbell, the force vector is still directly down toward the ground from the position that you're pressing in. The force vector of the cub allows you to add resistance all the way around your hand through that rotational movement on a completely different transverse plane while you're continuing to press through that vertical force vector. So it does totally change the quality of that movement. Now in this case, I've got my cub set to the short midsection with the long rackable bar sleeves on the outside. This is the completely modular version of the cub. And you can see here, I've got my initial resistance position set to the neutral grip, what's similar to a cambered bar, so that I can access rotation on both sides of pronation and supination. Now, if I change that to starting from a straight bar handle position, the quality of the external rotation of my hands and internal rotation of my elbows now becomes far more resisted and we can really mess around with those different variables as we get into training stuff like our bench press or our overhead press or curls and tricep extensions and it completely changes the way that your hands have to manipulate the bar and your hands are what's communicating with the rest of your torso and your lats, the stronger muscles down that kinetic chain in the same way your feet behave when they touch the ground and fire force through the big toe and communicate with your glutes. So your hands are the first contact point. By adding resistance to that contact point, we can feel a completely unique training experience. So for instance, if I've got the resistance on the cub set to this vertical position here, it makes it a little easier for me to rotate and now hold a fixed externally rotated hand, internally rotated elbow, and that's forcing me to really engage my lats in a way that I wouldn't normally be able to if I was in this traditional cambered position. Even on an angle, we can now focus more on that pure linear press rather than having to worry about the rotation 
and that's the performance enhancing quality of the Cub. What's really unique and interesting about the Cub, particularly the bar I've got here, is the modularity factor. This midsection can be switched out for a longer midsection, and these external sleeves can be switched out for shorter sections. So you can have a smaller, shorter bar that isn't quite rackable, but can be used with clients or in a way that allows you to feel more of that resistance with less weight on the overall minimum weight of the bar itself. But if you want a truly bench press driven and focused experience, you can shift this midsection of the bar, but keep the long sleeves and feel narrow grip positions versus wide grip positions and really develop a versatile movement library in regards to how your shoulders, elbows, and wrists and hands behave during the bench press. It gives you a tremendous amount of more options. For instance, I've got the resistance set to this vertical position, but if I bring that resistance down, I can now add, but if I bring that resistance down, I can now add resistance to that external rotation, internal rotation. As my hands pronate, my hands are gonna internally rotate, but my elbow is gonna externally rotate. So I can control that to a certain extent and feel that resistance as I rotate and pronate. I have to maintain a certain elbow position by engaging my lats and using my rotator cuff to stabilize that elbow position while I'm turning my hands. I can tell you right now, even with lightweight and somewhat light resistance with this green band, I can feel a lot more engagement through the entire kinetic chain from my hand all the way down my elbow, through my shoulder, into my torso. And that's really the key here for using the Cub as a way of enhancing your traditional bench press strength. The key element here is that you can load a significant amount, amount of weight on the bar without dramatically changing the entire dynamic of how you press uh, through a traditional straight bar. Because we're in a lying back position, because we're using a two-handed bar system, this is gonna dramatically enhance the way that we bench press when we go back to a traditional straight bar. And that's the key element here. We have a ball state study that already confirmed by using the cub, we have a superior muscular engagement experience when we use the cub for pronation and supination, particularly through our triceps and particularly in con contention with the dumbbell press with rotation. The cub is also superior to a barbell I'll put the study up on the screen. You can go ahead and pause your screen and take a look at some of the uh, description of what went on in that study and how the Cub performed in comparison to a traditional barbell and a dumbbell with rotation.
but the fact of the matter is adding rotation to the resistance, adding resistance, but the fact is adding resistance to the rotation of your hand and ultimately the entire kinetic chain and fascial integration from your hand all the way to your shoulder makes a massive difference in how our body behaves. I've noticed it, all of my clients have noticed it, and you can definitely feel it. And that's the key element here is you have to feel it to understand it. You don't have to necessarily understand it to feel it. Most of my clients have zero concept of anatomy and physiology and how it all works. They just know that when they put the cub on and they use the resistance of the cub, it makes a complete and total difference as to what it is they feel during the bench press. So for instance, you can see I've got the band set to that position below the middle peg points. So I've got to create resistance against the blade of my hand as I'm rotating my handles and maintaining this isometric, this static position. I have to maintain really good lat engagement through the entire movement. Now, as I actually start adding more dynamic rotation, I can feel my shoulders working and I can feel big time my pecs engaging as I press to the top. I feel my lats more, I feel my pecs more, and I definitely feel my forearms, supinators, pronators, biceps, triceps getting far more involved in the bench press motion itself. The implications of this are tremendous, guys. This means we don't have to spend so much time doing 10 different auxiliary exercises or even three extra auxiliary exercises to work those other muscles in an environment that really isn't even conducive to the pressing environment. Now, with the Cub, we can get all of that work done in one spot to enhance our bench press as a whole. So here I've got the Cub set to about 135 on the bar at the short midsection position with an already somewhat cambered handle position. I've got about a 45 degree angle on the hands. I'm gonna supinate, pronate through that press. I can feel the shaking. I can feel the additional engagement through my lats. I'm only gonna do about five reps here and start getting that CNS fired up. Get some blood flow going through the chest, lats, and back. And that felt really, really good. All right, so this time we've got 185 on the bar. Get our positioning set here. Remember, I'm in a narrow grip position here, so this means I've got to really emphasize getting tight and keeping that time under tension. That's another huge element of what the Cub brings to the table when it comes to creating an enhancement in the way that our body has to work in order to do any of the movements that you could do with the Cub, but particularly the bench press. You can feel every single tissue working that much harder to create the press. Now in this case, I've got this advanced muscle mechanics launch pad at my back, which is uh, forcing my shoulders and my shoulder stabilizers themselves to work a lot harder because I don't have the stability of the bench itself. So between the cub and that, it's a completely unique training experience when it comes to a sheer bench press motion and adding that additional engagement by making your hands work harder and with the launch pad, making your shoulders work harder. This is the ultimate way to train your bench press so that you perform at a higher level when you go back to a traditional straight bar and a traditional flat bench. So for this set, I've got 245s on each side of the bar. We're gonna take our advanced muscle mechanics launch pad off and we're gonna set the bar to a position where now I'm creating just a little bit of resistance as I get into that cambered neutral position. I've got the bar set to where 
I can pretty comfortably work 225 and I'm just going to create a little bit of that static resistance in order to get some additional work stabilizing my hand, wrist and elbow through this press. We're only going to do about three to five reps here. Let's see how it moves. That's a solid three reps at 225. That hand, wrist and elbow are really working hard to stabilize from this center mass position on the cub. And so when I switch back to a traditional bar, that weight's gonna just absolutely fly. Check it out. All right, so you can see here, I'm on the flat bench. I'm on a straight bar again, 225 on the bar. As compared to the cub, I can already tell you, I know this weight is gonna fly compared to what I felt on the cub. It's just that much more challenging when you're working the cub on the launch pad, those two systems destabilizing and working your shoulder blades and your hands much harder. Really potent training effect. Here we go, 225. Oh yeah. And I think I still had more in me. So, the Cub, 225 on the bar, even 185 on the bar, on the launch pad, on the flat bench, far more challenging than traditional straight bar on a traditional flat bench. That 225 felt like nothing compared to what I felt on the Cub, and that is the resistance and rotation difference. I'll see you in the gym, y'all. Live kinetically. Head over to resistanceandrotation.com. Use discount code LIVEKINETICALLY to order your cup.